Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, as you saw in the little intro, yesterday I went to town and we picked up a fancy engine hoist. It's all ready to do hoisting things. <laughs> so my original plan was yesterday I was going to come out here and, and try to knock some of this stuff out. Um, it started raining in the early afternoon so I didn't really get a lot done because I'm kind of constrained in, in the garage. I don't have a lot of room. So, but in order to be able to pull the engine and pull the transmission out, I was going to have to back the truck part of the way out of the garage so I could have enough room, which I've already done. I've already got that accomplished this morning. So today we're going to be pulling out the engine and pulling the transmission. And I'm going to show you how to do that. One of the first things though that I'm going to have to tackle is actually trying to get this rounded bolt off. <laughs> if you watch one of the previous videos, I rounded off one of the bolts that holds the U-joint into the yoke. So um, hopefully we can get that out. I'll kind of show you what I picked up yesterday too. The glare is kind of bad. And if you're ever dealing, you know, if you're working on rusty stuff, I highly recommend these, you know, get you some of those because if you ran off a bolt these all will allow you to still be able to grip on it and try to get it out um, I've got a bunch of these already however I didn't have the size I needed so I had to buy this whole package to get the one size and also I nothing against Irwin either I mean I have a bunch of Irwin tools and I've never broke one the one that I actually broke in the video was something I bought at Harbor Freight so are these more expensive? Yes, but sometimes, sometimes in tools you get what you pay for. If the if those bolt grip sockets do not work, then I've always got a easy out. Hopefully, it doesn't come to that because if you break one of these out, then it's a bad day. And I might try to throw some heat on it. I've got a little handheld um, acetylene tank torch type thing. I don't have a, a full cutting torch set up in the garage as of right now so I can't use that but uh, part of the reason too we're going to disconnect the drive shaft first is because right now it's connected to the transfer case so uh, when we start pulling the transmission and stuff we're going to have to pull the transfer case and if the drive shaft is disconnected from the transfer case it's going to be a lot harder to hold the drive shaft in, in order to get that bolt out. So I want to make sure I get that bolt out before we uh, take the drive shaft off in the front. And so really though, once we get that done, then I'll catch back up with you guys and then we'll go through the steps about uh, what we're going to do to disconnect um, the transmission from the engine and, and, and those steps. So we'll catch up with you in a bit. Okay guys, we have uh, successfully removed this little bad boy. I don't know how well you can see it. The lighting's pretty bad, but it was rounded off. But basically, what I did, I just took uh, took the little bolt, um, uh, whatever you call these things. <laughs> I just took this and I beat it on with a hammer, and uh, it it came out fairly easy. I didn't even have to apply any heat to it. So that's a good start to the day. Uh, especially after how the last video ended, we wasn't having very much stuff go right for us. So, so now we're just going to keep pressing forward. We're going to get this drive shaft out of there. We got our drive shaft removed as you saw it's nothing really too hard to do you just loosen up the bolts that hold your u-joints on to your yoke 
Uh, I do believe I found out the reason that the one bolt was so hard to get out. It looked like uh, somebody at one point maybe put some blue Loctite on it. Uh, blue Loctite is, you know, I don't know if that's something that's recommended for, for that, for these applications on these yokes. Uh, I'm not, I'm actually not sure on that. I've never put it on there before, never had any problem, but to each their own, right? Uh, so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing our engine and our transmission. Now, there's a couple different ways you can go about doing this. You can either remove your transmission first or you can take out your engine first or you know if you're removing both of them you don't have necessarily have to take both of them out to do so. I'm going to be taking the engine off first uh, just for the simple fact that uh, of the area space that I'm having to deal with. I'm going to have to take the engine out first so I can get it on an engine stand and then move the hoist back to take out the transmission. Now, you can drop your transmission underneath your truck, especially you know, if you don't have the cab off. You can, you've only got one option of actually dropping it down underneath the frame. In order to do that, you just loosen up these bolts and that will remove your cross member. And then if you've got a transmission jack, you can put it up underneath there and lower your transmission out. Uh, you can, in a pinch, you could probably use a floor jack, but it's just going to be awkward. Um, because it's not equally balanced in weight or anything like that so I don't I would assume that you're gonna to have to if you do go that route you're gonna to have to put the floor jack on on this part of the of the transmission to try to balance out some of the weight now one of the reasons I wanted to wait to do this until I took the frame off is so I can just give you guys a good visual uh, so you can see what's going on sometimes like I've seen videos of people removing engines and stuff and if you're up underneath the cab you really can't get a good look at things. There's actually eight 14 millimeter bolts to hold your bell housing to um, there to the adapter plate and then you will have to if you have a manual of course you'll have to remove your slave cylinder there's one nut or one bolt back up underneath there I don't think I can get to without removing that. I am going to remove the starter and probably um, all this thr throttle linkage, remove the wires. I'm going to get some of this stuff out of the way uh, so it's not hanging on anything. Remove these, uh, of course you have to remove those lines to your power steering pump and your vacuum pump. Once you disconnect your uh, bolts back there on the bell housing, you just got your motor mounts. They're a three quarter inch bolt. Uh, one nice thing about first gens, there's lots of room. So if you're doing this with the cab on and the fenders and everything on, you do have room to uh, maneuver the engine out of the truck, which makes it nice. So that's what we've got in store. I'm gonna go ahead and get busy on stripping the stuff off the engine and getting the engine hoist ready to uh, pick up the engine once we disconnect it from the bell housing and the motor mounts. And then we'll throw it on the engine stand and then get to the transmission. So we've about got everything taken off the right side of the engine or the driver's side, however you want to look at it. Um, I did have to end up cutting some of the power steering lines off with the bolt cutter. If the, their lines are bad, this is going to have to be replaced too. Um, so now I'm going to be working on the passenger side. And really there's not much that you necessarily have to take off. I'm going to go ahead and take off the turbo. Um, and my advice for you on that, especially if you've got a truck that's really old and probably never had the turbo off of it like this one, is to soak it down in some type of penetrating oil. And uh, this guy here also comes in handy. So when you're taking off the turbo, there's uh, 15 millimeter nuts. And 
Actually, the hardest one to get to is this one that's back up underneath here. And whoever, if somebody did have this turbo on, they, I guess, didn't put that nut back on there because they didn't want to fool with it. <laughs> but all I did was I soaked it down with the uh, penetrating oil, just used PV blaster, and then I, you know, just heated this uh, for a good minute or so. And then I put my wrench on it and it loosened, it actually loosened right up. So, and one thing I will say about anytime you're dealing with rusty bolts, rusty nuts, or something like that, and you're trying to get them off and you're trying to avoid. Uh, breaking the bolt or, or whatever sometimes what has helped me in the past is like once it starts loosening up and, and it starts to loosen but it feels like it's getting tight again well go go ahead and and actually tighten the bolt uh, spray some more penetrating oil on it and then try to take it off and just keep repeating that as many times as you need to because you know you don't want to break your bolt especially like you don't want to break that off your turbo and especially in your exhaust manifold You don't want to break these off in your head so be very very careful if you're ever removing your head if you feel any resistance at all you know just back up you know don't get aggravated put some more heat to it and some more penetrating oil i've been soaking these things down for for quite a while uh if you don't have one of those uh fancy uh, propane tank things then Usually getting your truck up to operating temperature will also help you uh, these uh, get these bolts out of here. So, But that's where we are. We're going to go ahead, like I said, we're going to take, take the turbo off, uh, disconnect the feed lines. I think those are, I forgot now what size they are, 11 sixteenths maybe? Looks like it anyway. And then there's some 10 millimeter bolts um, right here on your drain. So. We'll just loosen those up and that should come right on off. Shouldn't be uh, any big problems there. And we're also going to take the fan off. And I'm going to take the fan off right now because um, there's no way to stop the fan from turning. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a rat strap, put it around here, and anchor it to the frame, tighten it down really tight. And then we'll put our wrench on there and, and hopefully that will come on off there no big problems so that's where we're at and after that all we pretty much will have to do is just like I said we'll hook the fancy engine hoist up and start um, loosening up the motor mounts and and the bolts back here by the on the bell housing And the fan clutch has been removed. I finally got it off there. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to hit record. And I'll show you guys what I did. I put the belt back on there and I found a clamp. Uh, and I put on there just, I put the belt back on there to try to keep from damaging the pulley there. But once I tightened it up a little bit, it kind of went up against the, the fluid dampener down here and uh, it allowed me to be able to t spin the nut and then once you spin the nut you just keep turning the fan one thing to remember on your fan clutch it is reverse thread so you have to rotate it clockwise not counterclockwise because of the rotation of the engine so when you take it off remember that <clears throat> But everything now, uh, we're ready to take the engine out, so we're going to go ahead and do that. As you can see, it's getting dark outside. I uh, paused for a minute to grab a bite to eat, so, but we're going to get it done. We're, we're, we're going to knock it out, and this is going to get finished tonight. So it, if it takes to midnight, we're going to get it done. So here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, as you can see guys, we finally got it out. And so now we just need to just connect the clutch and fancy a flex plate here. And then we'll be ready to put this uh, bad boy on the old engine stand. It's just uh, 13 millimeter bolts around here. And then I may go ahead and even take the starter off. So that's what we're doing right now. There you have it. The engine is off of the truck finally. It's taken us pretty much well all day to get all this done with me in and out too, doing some other stuff that I had to get done today. But uh, don't looks like it doesn't look like we're going to get to the transmission uh, today. But there's always tomorrow. Um, one of the reasons that I'm going to have to stop is because uh, this is my fancy engine stand this is kind of a custom built job but it only does it only will hold a 5.9 Cummins unless you make an adapter plate for it but what I didn't realize is the uh, the bolts here that hold on the bolts that hold on the bell housing aren't long enough so I'm gonna have to get me some longer bolts tomorrow and everything is closed right now or I'd actually go get them but that's what's uh, that's what's the holdup is tonight. On a on a little side note, I know I've been uh, talking about if I found a truck that um, we might be going that route instead of using this frame. I've put a couple feelers out on some trucks that I found, uh, and nobody has contacted me back. I don't understand that. You know, you put stuff for sale on Facebook or uh, Craigslist or something, and then somebody contacts you and, and wants to purchase such item, and you just, uh, I ain't all well. I'll get back to them next week or something. So, anyways, waiting to hear back from those people so we can go look at these trucks and, you know, potentially make a purchase there. In that case, we would just be uh, saying goodbye to this frame and uh, using the other truck's frame. Other than that, guys, I uh, hope you're having a good weekend. Uh, I think I'm going to go in here and watch some TV, hang out with Marquita. We don't have the kids tonight, so uh, who knows what we may get into. So hopefully we'll just sit around and play some cards or something, watch TV. I don't know. <laughs> we don't get... We, <laughs> when you get to be our age, we don't go out much. <laughs> Not that we're that old. We just <laughs> stay home, I guess, more often than going out. So anyways, hope you guys have a good night. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow. Like I said, we'll be... Uh, finishing the rest of this stuff up so have a good night bye